And now to our first pick from Reuters. It goes, key facts and figures about Afghan election. Afghanistan goes to the polls on August 20th for presidential and provincial elections against a backdrop of increased violence by the Taliban. President Hamid Karzai is favored to win against 35 challenges, but unless he secures more than 50% of the vote in the first round, he faces a runoff against a second-placed candidate. Afghans are going to pick their president for the second time in the history of this war-stricken country. And this time, 38 candidates are campaigning for the post of president. But the incumbent, Hamid Karzai, appears to be the likely winner, as recent polls suggest that 45% of the electorate would vote for him. Hamid Karzai is facing a growing election challenge from his former foreign minister, Abdullah Abdullah, who, according to the polls, has 25% of the public support. Under the Afghan electoral law, Karzai needs more than 50% of votes to avoid a runoff against Abdullah Abdullah. Abdullah is campaigning for the top job through large public gatherings, television programs, and the Internet. But many here believe that the outcome of the election does not hinge on campaigns, but the U.S. role. Then who do you think is more favorable to Washington, Hamid Karzai or Abdullah Abdullah? And what is the difference between these two as long as the United States is concerned? Mm -hmm. Karzai says if re-elected, he will talk to militants inviting them to a grand tribal council. What's more, some of the 38 candidates are linked to armed militias, while others have threatened violence if they lose. Ashraf Ghani's proposed approach is also similar to Karzai's. Over the past years, President Hamid Karzai and top U.S. officials have occasionally offered peace talks to the Taliban, categorizing them like good Taliban in bad. But the Taliban leadership has rejected such calls. Afghan presidential election is to be held on August 20th, and as the vote approaches, campaign rallies have been held all over the country, especially in the Afghan capital, Kabul. More than 17 million eligible Afghans have registered to vote, and the electoral officials have set up about 7,000 polling centers across the country. But rising Taliban threats have already overshadowed the preparations, creating fears among the local people here. Fears over security deepened after the recent deadly attack near NATO's headquarters in Kabul. Meanwhile, the Taliban have vowed to disrupt the election process and warn the people not to vote. Taliban fighters were once thought to be a defeated group, but they are up and about now, while NATO persists on sending even more troops to prevent their spreading influence. In all, there are about 101,000 foreign troops in Afghanistan now. The U.S. and British troops have been leading major operations in southern Afghanistan since July to win back the territories controlled by insurgents and improve security ahead of the election. But given the rising unrest across the country, it seems the so-called major operations have failed to bring the hope for results. When this can be an important election uh, for the Afghan people because uh, the problem with Afghanistan right now is that they lack uh, solid institutions. May they, it be in political field, in social field or economic field. And what they need is a leader, a uh, leader amongst the people who can come and deliver and also create conditions in Afghanistan so that uh, the occupying forces can go back and Afghanistan can be more stable. But the problem with uh, these elections are that uh, nearly half of the population is not taking part in the elections. What I mean to say is that the Pashtun uh, a parts of Afghanistan so uh, we have to see the results of the elections because uh, Karzai is Pashtun while uh, the other opponent, the main opponent, Mr. Abdullah Abdullah, is a Tajik. Uh, the danger of these elections is that um, if either of them wins, the other can always raise an ethnic card. And like that, Afghanistan, there is a danger that Afghanistan can be divided on ethnic grounds unless one of the candidates really sweeps the poll and, and takes uh, such a big majority uh, which uh, becomes a representative of the Afghanistan people. The current president is not very happy with Mr. Karzai because uh, during Mr. Karzai's rule, uh, the rampant corruption in the Afghan society, the narcotics uh, trade uh, went on and on and uh, he was unable to build his uh, police force or the army uh, and e even the administrative structures which can replace the Americans. Now the Americans are interested that Afghanistan should become stable uh, as soon as possible so that the American and NATO forces can withdraw from there. But Mr. Karzai has been unable to deliver, deliver these goods 
so he has proved to be a weak leader uh, in that sense. So, but Americans are in a dilemma. They would like to keep uh, uh, President Karzai uh, to be re-elected because he's a known person in the Washington, D.C., while, while the other personalities are not so known. And secondly, uh, some of the personalities in the presidential elections are warlords. And there has been a lot of criticism in Washington, D.C. that uh, because of the violation of human rights, uh, these warlords are in fact complicating the, uh, the whole uh, system. So the United States is in a, in a dilemma, in fact. But I think uh, all said and done, uh, they would like to see uh, Mr. Karzai uh, being re-elected. Well, obviously. American interest is very clear. Um, now, uh, with coming of the Obama, it has become clearer because they have made a clear distinction between Al-Qaeda and Taliban. Uh, what they are after is the leadership of Al-Qaeda. With Taliban, they have very limited interest because, as we know, Taliban does not have an international agenda. What they have is a regional agenda. So they do not uh, endanger the American interest as such. That is why the Americans have been saying that we are ready to talk to those Talibans who are uh, ready for negotiations. It means that within uh, the Taliban structures, they are making a distinction between uh, the two categories of that. Uh, first of all, I want to make... Uh, because uh, the reason is that um, Taliban are from amongst the people. Uh, this is an insurgency where uh, the, the large population of um, Afghanistan is not opposed to Taliban. Uh, if not uh, for them, they also are not opposed to them. So they operate within a certain societal uh, setup. That is why uh, we see that for last years and last months there have been a lot of civilian casualties because, uh, and that has really angered uh, the tribes uh, still further. So what we can uh, say in one word is uh, the bad policies of the uh, U.S. administration and the NATO administration. They have been unable to read the ground situation correctly. They have been unable to uh, uh, evolve their tactics in a proper manner. And they have not uh, been helped by the local supporters of the Americans like Mr. Karzai and his companions. So all these um, factors uh, taken together uh, reflects the American and NATO weakness, uh, military, economic, political, administrative weaknesses in Afghanistan. British newspaper Daily Telegraph poses a question out for the fine print right here in Press TV. Whitney Amir Arafat.